So the home field advantage really um, stands for what we do in New York in the United States. Uh, I use materials that American brands have used historically when producing apparel. So you see like French terry, mesh, uh, chambray, and plaid. Uh, all custom milled fabrics and we executed them in ways uh, that you usually ha haven't seen them. We executed in ways that they haven't been used up until today. So when we used the mesh, you saw them used over the bleaker sweatpant um, and we used it as an applique on one of the uh, baseball jerseys, actually both the baseball jerseys. And when you see the chambray, we used it as a lining and also as an applique. Um, but when we use French terry, you see it on pieces like the fishtail jacket. So we used like traditional fabrics that American brands use, but we, you know, gave it the kith twist. So it's on um, pieces and silhouettes that you don't usually see in the fabrics that we used. So that was the idea of bringing um, that clothing, uh, that type of apparel uh, to kith, to this clothing line and to regions um, in countries with in countries that up until now you haven't really noticed uh, or seen kith in different stores so we wanted to bring the uh, the American um, and uh, New York City heritage uh, with the red white and blue colorways of, uh, of different pieces the way that the pieces are blocked uh, we wanted to bring the pride of um, New York City and America into different countries which we haven't been in before uh, so that's really like the home field advantage is bringing USA and New York City into other cities and uh, applying, you know, fabrics and uh, materials that American brands have historically used. Creating goods that have USA and NYC all over the products, it's a risk going into other countries and cities, you know? Uh, but that's why we, we, we did it for our first collection, because we think that uh, there is some demand for Kith product outside of New York City. Um, and I think that people want to have a piece of what we do uh, back home, you know? So, like, they want to somehow um, experience or be connected to the brand. And we feel like this is the best way to do it. It's the most organic way to do it. You know, we want them to kind of get a piece not only of the brand, but also the culture and where we come from. So, yes, it's a risk, you know, but I think uh, so far the reaction has been good. I think, you know, I don't really plan how I do things, you know, like we have ideas in the office and then we execute, you know, I worked um, on this project uh, on, the, on this clothing line eight months ago and, uh, you know, I, I didn't think that we needed a, a footwear element to it uh, because the idea and the concept is so strong. So we designed nine new silhouettes for the apparel and um, we concentrated on the fit uh, and the, the construction, the fabrics, it's all custom milled. Um, and we went through a, a number of different rounds before we finalized everything. So, uh, you know, this is a new, uh, apparel is relatively new uh, to me and, and to the brand, but what we've been able to do in the last two years has really, uh, has really been amazing. So I'm concentrating on both categories just as much now, yeah, so. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't look at things that way. You know, like, you know, the, the footwear is branded Ronnie Feig, and then the apparel is branded Kith. Um, I'm the creative director of the apparel, and then I have people that work uh, that work under me, designers that work under me to bring my conceptions to light. Um, sorry, to bring um, all of my ideas and um, help conceptualize with me. But they help bring my ideas to life uh, and. And with the footwear, no one, you know, no one really helps me because I know that business very well and I've been doing it for such a long time that I, I kept that branded um, Ronnie Feig just because of the credibility that I think I bring to the footwear game. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of separate. Um, uh, I, I don't like to I don't consider myself a designer. Uh, I never looked at it that way, you know? I just wanted to create product, and that's what I do. I create and execute, and I, I don't worry about the labels and what people want to slap on my name, you know? The pressure of continuously wanting to do better than the last project, it's, um, it's intense. 
uh, because I feel like every um, every project that I've had up up until today has been like has summarized that moment in time, you know. So a year ago, my projects were the best they can possibly be for a year ago. But like anybody else in any other business, you learn as you go. And um, as I continue to do what I do, both in footwear and apparel, I'm, I'm continuously learning. And I think that as long as you are willing to accept the fact that you don't know everything and that you're willing to learn, uh, everything can continuously get better. And uh, gradually, I think it's gotten to the point where you're seeing the progress in the work. So if you go through the timeline, because that's what it is, you know, it's a timeline. Every year, if you go through the body of work, I think it's gotten better and better. Uh, at least that's my that's my opinion, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's hard to look at um, at everything that uh, I've done in the past and and implement things that I've done in the past for the future. I just try to um, you know execute ideas as they come, you know and. Uh, and people have gotten a piece of my thought process throughout the time that I've been working on different collaborative footwear. But uh, I think nowadays uh, I'm working more on designing new uppers for brands. Uh, you just see, you see that now with the, the mid-top Sakura uh, Puma. That's a new design for the RF698. And going forward, you're going to see some new stuff from different brands and, and things that I try to, to do that's a little different from the norm, you know, try to challenge myself to get better. I think the brands have gotten um, acquainted with my team and and myself on the way on the way on the way that I work and uh, the way that it's worked in the last uh, couple of years. I've been fortunate enough to have great relationships with the brands where if I come up with a concept or an idea. Um, you know, it hasn't been very difficult to execute that. Um, brands don't try to push anything on me to do to do something that, you know, I I might not want to do. So, like, they, I don't think it's uh, so much brands asking me to do something. It's more like us sitting together and figuring out how we could do something together. It's more of a, like a team effort than just me wanting to do something or just them wanting to do something. I think it's more like a of a cohesive thing. You know, I meet with the brands quarterly, you know, four times a year. Um, and during those meetings, we speak about different things. And one of those things we usually speak about is what we're going to work on for the future. You're going to see a few things. Um, I mean, high fashion, I mean, you see what I did with Buscemi. Uh, that was a project that I really loved because, you know, we worked on designing that shoe together. Um, and that's upstairs right now at Colette, and that's like a special thing to me. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a kid from Queens, New York. You know, like for me, I wasn't supposed to get this far, and everything, you know, f from five years ago and on has all been a bonus for me. Like, I'm just trying to make the most out of my opportunities, uh, and I think, um, I think working with different brands is important. But you'll see some things for me that are different you know and now what's very important to me is also the experience of the retail store you know because we're in Colette right now downstairs in um in like this restaurant slash cafe and w what Sarah has been able to do here has been so inspiring to me you know and you know people are inspired by designers and uh by brands and I'm most inspired by experiences and this is an experience you know so for me, uh, what I've done with Kith in New York has been more than I ever thought I would do. But uh, moving forward, we're looking to like give a special experience to the consumer who walks in. So I'm as invested in the experience of, of, a, of a retail space than I am with actual product that I work on. So, you know, that's, that's a big part of what I'm doing right now, too. Luckily, I'm not um, designing shoes for eBay. Yeah. I'm designing shoes for people that want to wear product, good-looking product, product that is special. You know what happens on eBay and on Camp lists or all that stuff. I mean, uh, I love the sneaker 
community in the sneaker market. I do. I have love for those people. Um, but to me, I don't understand the mentality of wanting to buy something because they think it's going to sell for more. I understand that when you're buying stocks and you're investing in a company, but when you're buying a shoe, for me, you're buying into the moment and into the work that the person has put in. And for me, when I see people wearing my shoes, it's special to me because they got to experience like a product that has been conceptualized and was brought from inception to creation. And you know, there's a lot of work that goes into that. So I do it for the people to wear the product. You know, I wear the product. Um, you know, all the people that work for me love the product that we work on because they see the process. And the people that wear the product, I think they want to be a part of that, and I respect that. For people that are like storing them to sell them later, I don't have a problem against it. That's cool, um, but I can't promise you you're going to make more money. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know that business so well. I don't have a problem with resellers. Hustler is a hustler, you know. Like, I was brought up in New York, so like a lot of people had to hustle to make a living, and. I had to hustle when I was younger to sell shoes in a store for me to make my living, you know? Um, so I, I understand the mentality. I just, I don't have that embedded in me when I, when I go and try to create new product. I'm not worried about what, what things are going to resell for. Uh, if I have an idea that I want to keep more limited, it's not based off of what it's going to resell for. It's because I want less people to have it. I want it to be more special, you know? And that uh, goes parallel. It goes hand in hand with resale value, but it's not the reason behind why I make something more limited or anything like that. I, I think a lot of the Ronnie Feig product that ends up on eBay is there because it's not accessible to everybody around the world. Um, I keep it very tight as far as distribution because, you know, at times I'm worried about who the retailer might be that's going to tell my story or if they're going to tell the same story if they're going to merchandise the product the same way I want it to be merchandised. Those, thing, those things are the things I'm worried about. So I don't want to over distribute to places with, that, won't, that won't display my, my uh, products as I want them to be displayed. So because I keep the distribution very tight, um, they become more demanded, you know, and, and that's why I think my shoes have ended up on eBay. Uh, but again, like I... That's not what I do things for, you know what I mean? Like the eBay market, the resale market, it's always going to be what it is. Like it's always going to be there, you know, for any type of product, for an iPhone to a comic book to, you know, to shoes. Um, it's a big market. That is uh, for another day. That's a, that's, a, that's a question that has a very long answer. Um, but um, I think that there are... I think the brands are doing a good job tiering product, you know, and, and, and creating a tier where things are very limited and very special and very creative. Um, and, uh, you know, those, those products will always be put on a pedestal by, by, by the consumer. And they're always looking, consumers are always looking for something different. So I think the brands have realized that. You know, the bigger brands, uh, Nike always does a good job. And I think Adidas and Puma have really stepped it up. Uh, New Balance and Asics also have their own tiers. So, uh, and you're seeing little brands, uh, you know, independent brands come up also. Diodora has done a very good job um, this past year, and you know, it's it's fun it's fun to be in the market and see what what, what they what they're doing to adapt to the marketplace and to adapt to what um, the consumer is looking for from those brands. It's good to see that. Well, I, th I think the, the athletic footwear industry right now has peaked. I think it's at its all-time peak, actually. The younger kids are involved. The teens are involved. Even, you know, if my, ne my nephew is 12 years old, he's turning 13, he's like a sneakerhead, you know? And, uh, and then you have the teenagers who are sneakerheads. And then you have the guys in the 20s. But then you have the guys in the 30s, like myself. I wear sneakers almost every day. So I think it's peaked. I think it's everybody now that's... Um, not everybody, but it's almost everybody that uh, that's involved in that market and wants to be in that market and be in the know. Um, so where do I see it going forward? It depends on how the brands react to seeing how massive it's gotten. If they try to flood it and it becomes saturated, there's a cycle. And then it goes, you know, sneakers go down, boots and shoes go up. 
and then you know sneakers come back five years you know it's all a cycle it's like a five to seven year cycle that's what I've seen you know I've been in this industry for 20 years so I've seen the ups and downs of uh, athletic footwear and then shoes and boots which I call alternative footwear I feel like my collaborations are like my little children and uh, I love them all the same, you know? You don't favor one kid over the other, so... Um, although there are moments that I feel have been, like, very important to the brand, like what we did in Brazil, um, what we did in California and LA, what we did in Japan, in Tokyo. You know, I think Tokyo was the height of experiences that I've had in another city or another country. It amplifies everything I do because seeing um, people line up for, for product that I didn't even know existed. Like, I didn't know I had any fans in Tokyo. And then I see like 500 people lined up outside the store. I didn't even know that 500 people in Tokyo knew me, so like, or the brand. So for me, those are like important moments, but the product itself, like, I love all the product that I've worked on. Some to me, I wouldn't wear anymore. Like my older, like my first couple of uh, projects that I worked on, seem a little bit outdated for me like I think that I've evolved a lot since then uh, but they're still very important in my in my timeline you know so y the fact that you could see the growth means that it's important you know so it's good